New Zealand Wine, Wikipedia Article Audio New Zealand wine is produced in several mostly maritime, cool climate wine growing regions of New Zealand a southern hemisphere country in the South Pacific Ocean 1,600 km east of Australia. Like many other New World wines, it is usually produced and labeled as single varietal wines, or if blended the varietal components are listed on the label. New Zealand is famous for its Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc, and more recently its dense, Concentrated Pinot Noir from Martinboro, Marlboro, and Central Otago. History First Steps Sauvignon Blanc Breakthrough Climate and Soil Industry Structure and Production Methods Varieties, Styles, and Directions White Wines Sauvignon Blanc Chardonnay Pinot Gris Other white wines Red wines Pinot Noir Other red wines Rose Sparkling Wine Wine Regions of New Zealand Northland Auckland Wake Island Kumu Matakana Gisborne Hawke's Bay Wairarapa Martinborough Whilst wine has been made in New Zealand since the early 19th century, the modern wine industry in New Zealand began in the mid-20th century and has recently been undergoing rapid growth averaging 17% per annum for the last 20 years. In 2017 New Zealand produced 285 million litres from 37,129 hectares of vineyard area, about three quarters of which is dedicated to Sauvignon Blanc. Nearly 90% of total production is exported, chiefly to the United States, Britain and Australia reaching a record NZ$1.66 billion in export revenue in 2017. New Zealanders over the last 10 years consume a fairly constant 20 litres of wine per capita, about a third of which is imported from other countries, mainly Australia. Nelson Marlborough Winemaking and vine growing go back to colonial times in New Zealand. British resident and keen enologist James Busby, who had also established wine regions in Australia such as the Hunter Valley, was producing wine on his land near Waite Angie for local British soldiers in 1836. In 1851 New Zealand's oldest existing vineyard was established by French Roman Catholic missionaries for making communion wine, at what is now the Mission Estate Winery in Hawke's Bay. In 1883 William Henry Beetham was recognised as being the first pioneer to plant Pinot Noir and Hermitage grapes in New Zealand at his Lansdowne Vineyard in Masterton. In 1895 the expert consultant viticulturist and enologist Romeo Brigato was invited by the NZ government's Department of Agriculture to investigate winemaking possibilities and after tasting Beetham's hermitage he concluded that the Wairarapa in New Zealand was preeminently suited to viticulture. Beetham was supported in his endeavours by his French wife Marie Zeely Hermans Frere Beetham. Their partnership and innovation to pursue winemaking helped form the basis of modern New Zealand's viticulture practices. Dalmatian immigrants arriving in New Zealand at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century brought with them viticultural knowledge and planted vineyards in West and North Auckland. Typically, their vineyards produced table wine, sherry, and port for the palates of New Zealanders of the time and their own community. Canterbury Waipara Valley 
For the first half of the 20th century, economic, legislative and cultural factors had made wine a marginal activity, in terms of economic importance and domestic consumption. The majority of land use in New Zealand was at the time animal agriculture, and the exports of dairy, meat and wool dominated the economy. The prohibition and temperance movements had reduced the appreciation of wine with the New Zealand public, who were predominantly British immigrants who favoured beer and spirits, and the Great Depression of the 1930s did the fledgling wine industry no favours. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, these factors that held back the development of the industry simultaneously underwent subtle but historic changes. In 1973, Britain entered the European Economic Community, which required the ending of historic trade terms for New Zealand meat and dairy products. This led ultimately to a dramatic restructuring of the agricultural economy. Before this restructuring was fully implemented, diversification away from traditional primary products dairy, meat and wool to products with potentially higher economic returns was explored. Vines, which produce best in low moisture and low soil fertility environments, were seen as suitable for areas that had previously been marginal pasture. The end of the 1960s saw the end of the New Zealand institution of the Six O'Clock Swill, where pubs were open for only an hour after the end of the working day and closed all Sunday. The same legislative reform saw the introduction of bio-licenses for restaurants, which had a marked effect on New Zealanders' appreciation of an approach to wine. Finally the late 1960s and early 1970s saw the rise of the OE, short for Overseas Experience, where young New Zealanders travelled and lived and worked overseas, predominantly in Europe. As a cultural phenomenon, the overseas experience predates the rise of New Zealand's premium wine industry, but by the 1960s a distinctly Kiwi identity had developed and the passenger jet made the overseas experience possible for a large numbers of New Zealanders, who experienced firsthand the premium wine cultures of Europe. In 1973 Montana planted Marlborough's first vineyard and produced its first Sauvignon Blanc in 1979, labeled by year of production and grape variety, in the style of wine producers in Australia. Also produced in that year were superior quality wines of Mullerthagau, Riesling, and Pinotage. Good Cabernet Sauvignon wine from Auckland and Hawke's Bay also boosted the industry with ever-increasing investment, vineyard plantings, rising land prices and greater local interest and pride. Such was the boom that overplanting occurred, particularly in hybrids and less well-regarded but high-yield varietals such as Mullerthagau. In 1984 the then Labour government paid growers to pull up vines to address a glut that was damaging the industry. Ironically, many growers used the government grant not to restrict planting, but to swap from these now less economic varieties to more fashionable varieties, particularly Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc, using the old rootstock. This combined with the introduction throughout the 1980s of much improved canopy management techniques to reduce leaf vigour and improve grape quality, set the New Zealand wine industry on a course of recovery and much improved quality. In the 1980s, wineries in New Zealand, especially in the Marlborough region, began producing outstanding, some critics said unforgettable, Sauvignon Blanc. It was in 1985 that the Sauvignon Blanc from Cloudy Bay finally brought international attention and critical acclaim to New Zealand wine, and wine writer George Tabor recounts that Cloudy Bay is what many people consider to be the world's best Sauvignon Blanc. New Zealand's reputation is now well established, 
Ounce Clark wrote that New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc was arguably the best in the world, and Mark Oldman wrote that New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is like a child who inherits the best of both parents' exotic aromas found in the New World and the pungency and limey acidity of an Old World Sauvignon Blanc like Sancerre. Wine regions are mostly located in free-draining alluvial valleys with notable exceptions. The alluvial deposits are typically the local sandstone called greywack, which makes up much of the mountainous spine of New Zealand. Sometimes the alluvial nature of the soil is important, as in Hawke's Bay where the deposits known as the Jimblet gravels represent such quality characteristics that they are often mentioned on the wine label. The Jimblet gravels is an area of former river bed with very stony soils. The effect of the stones is to lower fertility, lower the water table, and act as a heat store that tempers the cool sea breezes that Hawke's Bay experiences. This creates a significantly warmer mesoclimate. Another soil type is represented in Waipara, Canterbury. Here there are the Omii Hills which are part of the Torless group of limestone deposits. Viticulturalists have planted Pinot Noir here due to French experience of the affinity between the grape type and the chalky soil on the Côte d'Or. Even the greywack alluvial soils in the Waipara Valley floor has a higher calcium carbonate concentration as can be witnessed from the milky water that flows in the Waipara River. The Kawarau Valley has a thin and patchy topsoil over a bedrock that is schist. Early vineyards blasted holes into the bare rock of north-facing slopes with miners' caps to provide planting holes for the vines. These conditions necessitate irrigation and make the vines work hard for nutrients. This, low cropping techniques and the thermal effect of the rock produces great intensity for the grapes and subsequent wine. The wine regions in New Zealand stretch from latitudes 36 degrees south in the north, to 45 degrees south in the south. The climate in New Zealand is maritime, meaning that the sea moderates the weather producing cooler summers and milder winters than would be expected at similar latitudes in Europe and North America. Maritime climates tend also to demonstrate higher variability with cold snaps possible at any time of the year and warm periods even in the depth of winter. The climate is typically wetter, but wine regions have developed in rain shadows and in the east, on the opposite coast from the prevailing moisture-laden wind. The wine regions of New Zealand tend to experience cool nights even in the hottest of summers. The effect of consistently cool nights is to produce fruit which is nearly always high in acidity. New Zealand's winemakers employ a variety of production techniques. The traditional concept of a vineyard, where grapes are grown on the land surrounding a central simply owned or family owned estate with its own discrete viticultural and winemaking equipment and storage, is only one model. While the European cooperative model is uncommon, contract growing of fruit for winemakers has been a feature of the New Zealand industry since the start of the winemaking boom in the 1970s. Indeed, a number of well-known producers started out as contract growers. Many fledgling producers started out using contract fruit while waiting for their own vines to mature enough to produce production quality fruit. Some producers use contract fruit to supplement the range of varieties they market, even using fruit from other geographical regions. It is common to see, for example, an Auckland producer market a Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc or a Marlboro producer market a Gisborne Chardonnay. Contract growing is an example of the use of indigenous agro-industrial methods that predate the New Zealand wine industry. Another example of the adaptation of NZ methods toward the new industry was the universal use of stainless steel in winemaking adapted from the norms and standards of the New Zealand dairy industry. 
there was an existing small-scale industrial infrastructure ready for winemakers to economically employ. It should be remembered that while current winemaking technology is almost universally sterile and hygienic worldwide, the natural antibiotic properties of alcohol production were more heavily relied upon in the 1970s when the New Zealand wine industry started. This pervasive use of stainless steel almost certainly had a distinctive effect on both New Zealand wine styles and the domestic palate. The early wines which made a stir internationally were lauded for the intensity and purity of the fruit in the wine. Indeed, the strength of flavor in the wine favored very dry styles despite intense acidity. While stainless steel did not produce the intensity of fruit, it allowed for its exploitation. Even today, New Zealand white wines tend toward the drier end of the spectrum. New Zealand has long been best known for its Sauvignon Blanc, which dominates New Zealand's wine industry. In 2017 its vines took up 22,085 hectares of vineyard area, a full 60% of New Zealand's total grape planting, and Sauvignon Blanc wine made up 86% of the nation's exports. New Zealand's Sauvignon Blanc is regarded by many critics as among the best in the world. Historically, Sauvignon Blanc has been used in many French regions in both Aoke and Vin de Pays wine, and famously Sancerre and Poerly Fume. Following Robert Mondavi's lead in renaming Californian Sauvignon Blanc Fume Blanc, there was a trend for oaked Sauvignon Blanc in New Zealand during the late 1980s. Strong oaky overtones dropped out of fashion through the 1990s but have since made a comeback with several makers now offering oak-aged Sauvignon Blanc. Chardonnay is produced as far south as central Otago, but plantings increase the further north one goes. There is little discernible difference in styles of Chardonnay between the New Zealand wine regions, individual winemakers' recipes, use of oak, and the particular qualities of a vintage have tended to blur any distinction of terroir. It is therefore unsurprising that almost every region is represented among the most highly rated New Zealand Chardonnays, which include wines from Kumu River Estate, Church Road, Clearview, Sacred Hill and Te Mata Estate, Atarangi, from Newdorf, Milton Estate and Villa Maria. Although Chardonnay may be less fashionable than it was 10 years ago, Winemakers in 2016 reported strong sales and a recent upswing. It also commands higher prices than any other New Zealand white wine variety. Pinot Gris emerged in the early 2000s from almost nowhere to the country's fourth most planted variety 2017, overtaking Riesling in 2007. It is planted mostly in Marlborough, Hawke's Bay, and Gisborne, with the remainder in the South Island. Some of the initial plantings of Pinot Gris were identified later as flora, indeed, some Auckland winemakers have incorporated this mishap into their flora wine names, such as the Rogue from Ascension and the Imposter from Omaha Bay Vineyards. Other white wine varietals grown in New Zealand include Pinot Gris, Riesling, Gewurztraminer and Viognier, and less commonly Chenin Blanc, Alberino, Arnice, and Semillon. Riesling is produced predominantly in Martinborough and the South Island. The same may be said about Gewurztraminer, although it is also planted extensively in Gisborne. Chenin Blanc was once more important but the viticultural peculiarities of the variety, particularly its unpredictable cropping in New Zealand, have led to its disfavor. Good examples nevertheless exist, from Esk Valley, Mark Rain, and Milton Estate. Today, New Zealand's most internationally well-known red wines are made from Pinot Noir, 
which has risen to become its second most planted variety after Sauvignon Blanc. Early in the modern wine industry, the comparatively low annual sunshine hours to be found in NZ discouraged the planting of red varieties. But even at this time great hopes were had for Pinot Noir. Initial results were mixed, due to the limited number of Pinot Noir clones available for planting, yet the St. Helena 1984 Pinot Noir was notable enough that the Canterbury region was thought to become the New Zealand home for Pinot Noir. While the early excitement passed, the Canterbury region has witnessed the development of Pinot Noir as the dominant red variety, particularly in the now predominant Waipara sub-region. Producers include Waipara Hills, Pegasus Bay, Waipara Springs, Muddy Water, Greystone, Omii Hills, and Black Estate. The next region to excel with Pinot Noir was Martinborough. 75 kilometers east of Wellington in the Wairarapa region of the North Island. Several vineyards including Palliser Estate, Martinborough Vineyards, Murdoch James Estate and Adarangi consistently produced interesting and increasingly complex wine from Pinot Noir at the end of the 1980s and into the 1990s. At around this time the first plantings of Pinot Noir in central Otago occurred in the Kawarau Gorge. Central Otago had a long history as a producer of quality stone fruit and particularly cherries. Significantly further south than all other wine regions in New Zealand, it had been overlooked despite a long history of grape growing. However, it benefited from being surrounded by mountain ranges which increased its temperature variations both between seasons and between night and day making the climate unusual in the typically maritime conditions in New Zealand. In recent years Pinot Noir from central Otago has won numerous international awards and accolades, making it one of New Zealand's most sought-after wines. The first vines were planted using holes blasted out of the north-facing schist slopes of the region, creating difficult, highly marginal conditions. The first results coming in the mid to late 1990s excited the interest of British wine commentators, including Jancis Robinson and Ounce Clark. Not only did the wines have the distinctive acidity and abundant fruit of New Zealand wines, but they demonstrated a great deal of complexity, with aromas and flavors not common in New Zealand wine and normally associated with Burgundian wine. Producers include A. Carua, Felton R.D., Chard Farm, and M.T. Difficulty. The newest wine region growing Pinot Noir is the Waitaki Valley, which follows the Waitaki River on the border between Otago and Canterbury. In a blind tasting of New Zealand Pinot Noir in 2006, Michael Cooper reported that of the top 10 wines, five came from central Otago, four from Marlborough and one from Waipara. This compares with all top 10 wines coming from Marlborough in an equivalent blind tasting in the previous year. Cooper suggested that this has to do with more central Otago production becoming available in commercial quantities, than the relative qualities of the region's Pinot Noir. As is the case for other New Zealand wine, New Zealand Pinot Noir is fruit-driven, forward and early maturing in the bottle. It tends to be quite full-bodied, very approachable, and oak maturation tends to be restrained. High-quality examples of New Zealand Pinot Noir are distinguished by savory, earthy flavors with a greater complexity. In an article in Decanter, Bob Campbell suggests that regional styles are starting to emerge within New Zealand Pinot Noir. Marlborough, with by far the largest plantings of Pinot, produces wines that are quite aromatic, red fruit in particular red cherry, with a firm tannic structure that provides cellaring potential. Central Otago with the second highest area planted, has strong, sweet plum and cherry flavors and thyme notes. 
In wines from cooler subregions there are edgier qualities with fresh herb, spice, and pronounced mineral flavors. Wairarapa produces wines that are lighter, softer, and more supple. Waipara in Canterbury has two styles. Wines produced on the flat valley floor are lighter and supple and have a bias toward red fruits. Pinot produced on the surrounding hills appear more concentrated, with dark fruit flavors and occasionally with a chalk-slash-mineral influence. Nelson is similarly divided into two sub-regions with the Waimea Plains producing accessible wines with vibrant acidity and those from the Mudara Valley producing wine that is richer, more concentrated and structured. Waitaki River Basin Central Otago Trends in Production and Export Praise and Criticism Statistics by region. New Zealand red wines are also made from the classic Bordeaux varieties. Wines tend to be made primarily from Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, and less often Cabernet Franc, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. Syrah wines from Hawke's Bay and Wayhawk Island have also gained a good reputation, and there are also smaller plantings of Tempranillo, Pinotage, Monte Polciano, and Sangiovese in Hawke's Bay and the warmer Auckland regions. Early success in the Hawke's Bay region in the 1960s by McWilliams and in the 1980s by T. E. Mata Estate, led to a phase in the 1980s and 1990s of mainly Cabernet Sauvignon planting and wine production by large producers such as Corbons, McWilliams, and Mission Estate. As viticultural techniques were improved and tailored to New Zealand's maritime climate, other Bordeaux-style grapes were planted, and a switch of emphasis made to the more suitable, earlier ripening Merlot. Today, Merlot is the second most planted variety after Pinot Noir, accounting for 1,203 hectares, far outweighing Cabernet Sauvignon plantings by 5 to 1. Typically, these Bordeaux blends come from the hotter and drier regions of New Zealand. 86% of production is centered in Hawke's Bay, with Wayhawk Island also producing some notable wines. Wines that have made a name for Wayhawk Island include the Laros from Stony Ridge, and wines from Destiny Bay, Man o' War, and Goldie Estate. Wines that typify the best of Hawke's Bay include Elephant Hill Aravita, T. E. Mata Estates Colrain, Craggy Ranges Sophia, Newton Forest Estates Cornerstone, Esk Valleys The Terraces and Villa Maria's Reserve Merlot and Cabernet. In Marlborough there are also a small number of producers of Bordeaux-style varietal wines, and examples of Bordeaux blends can be found as far south as Waipara, where the maestro from Pegasus Bay also demonstrates the drift away from Cabernet Sauvignon to Merlot predominant blends. As can be seen in the hectare planting statistics, the amount of Cabernet Sauvignon in production has halved since the early part of the century at a time when Sauvignon Blanc has quadrupled, and Pinot Noir has doubled. Fashion has turned from Bordeaux blends to Pinot Noir, but it also indicates the marginality of Cabernet Sauvignon in New Zealand conditions. Most New Zealand wine producers that produce Pinot Noir or Merlot also produce a rose style wine although it is sometimes found made from other red varieties. New Zealand rose is made to drink immediately rather than age, resulting in the crisp, fresh, fruit-forward flavors popular with the New Zealand public. Well-rated examples are from Forest, Isabel, T.I. Point, White Haven, and Rapora Springs. Excellent quality method traditional sparkling wine is produced in New Zealand. Typically, it was Marlborough that was the commercial birthplace of New Zealand method traditional sparkling wine. Marlborough still produces a number of high quality sparkling wines, 
and has attracted both investment from champagne producers and also Champonois winemakers. Other sparkling wines from Marlborough include Polaris, and the now venerable Lion Nathan brand, Lindauer. New law came into force in New Zealand in 2017 that established a geographical indication classification for New Zealand wine, equivalent to European Protected Geographical Indication Classification and the American Viticultural Areas in the United States. In 2017 a total of 18 applications were lodged with the GI Register at the Intellectual Property Office of New Zealand. Some have already been approved, and the review process for the remainder should be complete by early 2018. Northland is the most northerly wine region in New Zealand, and thus closest to the equator. A geographical indication since October 2017, it is also the smallest GI producing 92 tons in 2016 from an area of only 64 hectares under vines. Although Chardonnay is the most planted variety, it is most well known for ripe Syrah red wines, and white wines from Pinot Gris, which together comprise the top three planted varieties. Some Northland wineries are also making wine from warmer climate grapes such as Monte Polciano, Chamborson, and Pinotage. The combination of high summer temperatures and high rainfall can be challenging for viticulture, although irrigation is not needed, the humidity can encourage some pests and diseases. The fertile soils and Northland climate also results in high vine productivity requiring good vineyard management to limit yields in order to ensure better quality wines. Consequently, Northland tends to produce ripe wines, with low acidity. This small region has a vineyard area in 2016 of 323 hectares and lies around New Zealand's largest city. The region produces some of New Zealand's finest Chardonnay white wines which is the most planted variety, followed by the Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc and Malbec that produce Auckland's well-regarded red Bordeaux-style wines. Soils are usually heavy clay, or small areas of volcanic-derived soils, and it is the warmest of New Zealand's vine-growing areas. There are three sub-regions within Auckland, Waihuk Island, Kumu, and Matakana. In recent years, the hotter temperatures are allowing Auckland winemakers to experiment with Italian and Spanish grape varieties, such as Alberino, Monte Polciano, Sangiovese, Dolcetto, Temperanillo, and even Nebbiolo. Wayhuk Island is east of Auckland in the Oraki Gulf, and has a dry and warm mesoclimate. It is primarily planted in French red grape varieties. Syrah, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon, as well as the white grape varieties Chardonnay and Pinot Gris. The Bordeaux-style red wines that are produced are considered to be significantly ripe and full-bodied, and some of the best in New Zealand. The Laros from Stony Ridge Estate has an international reputation and is often compared with some of the best Bordeaux wine in the world and comparing favorably with the likes of Chateau Latour and Chateau Rothschild. Other notable wine producers are Destiny Bay Vineyards, Obsidian Vineyard, Peacock Sky, Man o' War, Cable Bay, Moodbrick, and Te Motu. Since Wayhuk Island has a very small area of 92 square kilometers, the wines tend to have a higher price premium due to the inherently small scale of the wineries the cost of land, and the increased cost of access to the island by boat. The geographical indication of Kumu is a small subregion west of Auckland City, surrounding the towns of Huape and Kumu, as far west as Waimaku, and east to the southern edge of the town of Riverhead. The area is most notable for its excellent Chardonnay, with well-reviewed examples especially from Kumu River and Saljan's Estate Winery. 
Chardonnay makes up 85% of the vineyard area in Kumu, with Pinot Gris and Pinot Noir making up most of the remainder. Some of New Zealand's oldest wineries are in Kumu, established in the late 1800s by Croatian settlers working the Kari gum fields. Some of these, such as Montana Wines, Babbage, Nobilo, and Cooper's Creek are now among New Zealand's largest wineries, having extended their operations throughout the rest of New Zealand. Matakana is a small geographical indication and sub-region of the Auckland GI, situated about 60 kilometres north of Auckland City around the towns of Warkworth and Matakana. It extends from Mahurangi Harbour in the south, and as far north as Lee, although most of the vineyards are clustered in the hills and valleys between Warkworth and Matakana. The area has a warm mesoclimate protected from prevailing winds by hills to the north and west, and a maritime influence from Omaha Bay and Kawahu Bay. Matakana wineries are mostly small, family-run, or lifestyle vineyards, with very small plots and non-commercial production volumes, usually dry-farmed on north-facing hill slopes. Wine began to be made in Matakana in the 1960s, but the oldest current vineyards are Heron's Flight, Providence Wines, and Ransom Wines, established in the early 1990s. Around the turn of the century Heron's Flight replanted its mainly Bordeaux varieties with the Italian varieties Sangiovese and Dolcetto, and many of the newer wineries, have also planted Tanat and Petit Verdet alongside the usual French varieties, as well as the Italian and Spanish varieties Barbara, Nebbiolo, Alberino, Roussan, and Monte Polciano. As of the 2017 vintage, there were more than 65 hectares planted in vines, and 21 commercial grape growing slash winery operations within the Matacana GI. Although the Gisborne GI established in October 2017 covers most of the East Cape Gisborne district, most of the 1,371 hectares of vineyard area in 2017 is concentrated in a relatively small area around Gisborne City. The fertile Gisborne region originally grew prodigious grape yields throughout the mid-20th century, which was mostly used to make fortified and cask wines. In the 1980s a shift away from cask wine for better quality, bottled still wine meant that huge areas of bulk varieties, most notably Mollerthagau, were uprooted and replaced with Chardonnay and Gewurztraminer, for which the region is well known today. It is also the world's most easterly vine-producing region. Hawke's Bay is New Zealand's oldest and second largest wine production region, reaching 43,000 tonnes in 2016 from 4,641 hectares of planted vines, representing 10.2% of total national production. It is the premier area for Bordeaux blend reds in New Zealand, and the region has developed a reputation for quality Syrah at home and abroad. Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc are produced, and more recently Viognier. Well-known producers include Brookfields Estate, Clearview Estate, Elephant Hill, Esk Valley, Villa Maria, Vital, Trinity Hill, Craggy Range, Newton Forest Estate, T. E. Mata Estate, Moana Park Estate, Mission Estate, Silini, Sacred Hill, C.J. Pask, and Babbage. The Wairarapa Wine Growing Region, a geographical indication since October 2017, is one of New Zealand's smallest. It contains two GI subregions, Gladstone and Martinborough, as well as Masterton and Opaki. Martinboro was the original area planted, on the basis of careful scientific study in the 1970s, which identified its soils and climate as perfectly suited to the cultivation of Pinot Noir. As a consequence, 
many of the vineyards established there are older than their counterparts in the rest of the Wairarapa. The area in general lies in the rain shadow of the Terrarua Range, which gives it a warm climate with relatively low rainfall. Subtle differences are seen in the wines from the South Wairarapa, which has more maritime influences, to those grown further north in Gladstone and Masterton. By 2016 the Wairarapa had 119 wineries or commercial growers, with a total vineyard area of 1,005 hectares, or about 3% of the New Zealand total. Nearly half of this area is Pinot Noir, the remainder mostly Sauvignon Blanc, with smaller areas of Pinot Gris, Chardonnay and Syrah. Martinborough is a small wine village located 75 kilometres east of Wellington by road, in the South Wairarapa. The combination of topography, geology, climate and human effort has led to the region becoming one of New Zealand's premier wine regions in spite of its small size, particularly for Pinot Noir. The growing season from flowering to harvest is amongst the longest in New Zealand. Naturally breezy conditions control vine vigor, creating lower yields of grapes with greater intensity. A genuine cool climate, with a long, dry autumn, provides an ideal ripening conditions for Pinot Noir and other varietals, such as Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris, and Syrah. Most of the wineries are located on the Martinborough Terrace a raised alluvial terrace of the nearby Ruamahanga River. Martinborough wineries are relatively small and typically family-owned, with the focus on producing quality rather than quantity. Relatively small yields enable Martinborough winemakers to devote themselves to handcrafting superior wines. Among the many long-established wineries, several, including Schubert Wines, T.E. Karanga, Adarangi, Palazer Estate, Murdoch James Estate, and Dry River, have become internationally recognized as premium producers of Pinot Noir. Nelson has the sunniest climate in New Zealand, with an annual average sunshine total of over 2,400 hours, approximately equivalent to Tuscany. The long autumns permit the production of fine late harvest wines. There are two sub-regions in Nelson, Waimea and Mudara Valley. Notable wineries from the region include Newdorf Vineyards, awarded Raymond Chan's 2012 Winery of the Year. In many respects, the Wairaw Valley and the districts surrounding Blenheim are the home of the modern New Zealand wine industry. Marlborough, a geographical indication since 2017, is by far the largest wine district in terms of production and area under vines. In 2016 Marlborough produced 232,000 tonnes from 24,365 hectares of predominantly Sauvignon Blanc vines representing just over three-quarters of New Zealand's entire wine production. It has a number of sub-regions including the Wehape Valley, Renwick and the Spring Creek area. Marlborough is well known internationally for Sauvignon Blanc in particular, and its Pinot Noir is also attracting attention. Canterbury is a large geographical indication, covering an area of some 44,500 square kilometres yet with only 168 hectares outside the Waipara Valley GI planted as vineyard. Winemakers are concentrated in a few small areas, such as West Melton, Banks Peninsula, Cheviot and Ralston, and notable producers include French Peak, Tresillion, Melton Estate and Lone Goat. Lone Goat is notable for producing a well-reviewed wine from the Ehrenfelser grape variety, and was spun off from Giessen Estate which moved to Marlborough. In order of descending planting area, varieties grown in Canterbury outside Waipara Valley include Pinot Noir, Sauvignon Blanc, 
Riesling, Pinot Gris, and Chardonnay. While not as well known as Waipara for producing Pinot Noir, many mid-Canterbury winemakers are nonetheless well respected for producing earthy Pinot Noir with a forest floor characters. Further inland from Waipara, the limestone soils around Waikari are producing well-reviewed wine from Bell Hill and Pyramid Valley, using organic and slash or biodynamic production methods, and close planted vineyards. Further north in Cheviot and Hanmer Springs, notable producers M.T. Beautiful and Marble Point are producing well-regarded Pinot Noir. Waipara Valley is a geographical indication and sub-region of the larger Canterbury GI, located about 60 km north of Christchurch. The valley floor provides a warm microclimate ideal for viticulture, protected on either side by the southern Alps and low coastal hills which temper the cool ocean winds. In the 1970s the first vineyard to be planted was Pegasus Bay which established a reputation for its Riesling wine. The region now makes up the bulk of Canterbury's plantings with a total area under vine of 1,257 hectares, and is now the most well-known Canterbury area for Pinot Noir, of which 340 hectares is planted. Liam Stevenson M.W. has described Waipara as possibly the most exciting place to grow Pinot Noir. Good examples include Black Estate, Belbird Spring, Fancrest Estate, Muddy Water, Greystone, Waipara Springs, Pegasus Bay, and Crater Rim. Greystone Wines has won the Decanter International Trophy for Pinot Noir in 2014 and the Air New Zealand Trophy for Pinot Noir. Black Estate was awarded the trophy for Best Pinot Noir at the International Wine and Spirits Competition in 2010. White wines of the region include varietal wines of most commonly Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, Pinot Gris, and Chardonnay. New Zealand's newest wine-growing region is located on the border of Otago and Canterbury. Wine producers include Pascal, Osler, Waitaki Braids, and Forest. Pinot Noir is produced here, as well as white aromatic varieties including Riesling, Pinot Gris, Gewurztraminer, and Chardonnay. Central Otago is home to the most southerly wine-producing region in the world. The vineyards are also the highest in New Zealand at 200 to 400 metres above sea level on the steep slopes of lakesides and the edges of deep river gorges, often also in glacial soils. Central Otago is a sheltered inland area with a continental microclimate characterised by hot, dry summers, short, cool autumns, and crisp, cold winters. It is divided into several subregions around Bannockburn, Bendigo, Gibston, and Queenstown, Wanaka, the Kawarau Gorge, the Alexandra Basin, and the Cromwell Basin. The initial focus for the industry's export efforts was the United Kingdom. The late 1970s and early 1980s were not only pioneering times for production but also for marketing. As with many New Zealand products, wine was only really taken seriously at home when it was noticed and praised overseas, and in particular by British wine commentators and critics. For much of the history of New Zealand wine exports the United Kingdom market, with its lack of indigenous production, great thirst, and sophisticated wine palate, has been either the principal or only market. More recently, this UK dominance of exports has eroded. In 2000, the UK market represented half of New Zealand's total exports of NZ $168 million. By 2017 export value had risen to NZ $1.66 billion, but UK exports had dropped to second place at 23% of total exports behind the United States at 
with Australia accounting for almost the same proportion of export value at 22% in third place. Other countries include Canada, the Netherlands, and China. Wine exports to China, whilst still only a small proportion of export revenue, are remarkable for having grown more than tenfold in the decade since 2008. The Chinese market is seen by some wineries and industry pundits as having a large untapped potential. Today, New Zealand's wine industry is highly successful in the international market. New Zealand wine growers reported in 2017 that export sales had risen to a new record of NZ $1.66 billion, with the goal to achieve NZ $2 billion and become a top five export industry. To meet the increasing demand for its wines, the entire country's vineyard plantings grew from 7,410 hectares in 1997 to 37,129 hectares in 2017. This more than five-fold increase in vineyard area over just two decades has led to a similar increase in sales and export revenue. In 2008, The Economist reported that for the first time, wine overtook wool to become New Zealand's 12th most valuable export at NZ $760 million, up from only NZ $94 million just a decade earlier in 1997. The industry sold 1 billion glasses of wine in nearly 100 countries, and more than 10% of wine sold in Britain for more than £5 was from New Zealand. As in many places in the world, an emerging trend in New Zealand wine is an increased recognition for high-quality wines coming from small, boutique wineries. In 2016 these smaller producers, with a vineyard area of no more than 20 hectares, represented over three-quarters of New Zealand's wineries. They are located fairly evenly throughout all wine regions with the larger producers predominantly in Marlborough, Hawke's Bay, Gisborne, and Waipara. New Zealand wine growers has also placed a growing emphasis on sustainability and organic certification, including monitoring and measuring water, energy, soil and pest management, waste reuse, land and biodiversity restoration, and social factors such as tourism impacts and staff training. Its first annual sustainability report in 2016 states that 98% of NZ's vineyard area is certified under its Sustainable Wine Growing New Zealand scheme. Cloudy Bay Vineyards set a new standard for New World Sauvignon Blanc and was arguably responsible for its huge increase in interest, particularly in the United Kingdom. Louis Vuitton Mode Hennessy a French luxury brand conglomerate, now owns a controlling interest in Cloudy Bay. Following on from the early success of Sauvignon Blanc, New Zealand has been building a strong reputation with other styles, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Cabernet slash Merlot blends, Pinot Gris and Syrah to name a few. UK wine writer Paul Howard praised New Zealand Pinot Noir in 2006, writing that comparisons with Burgundy are inevitable and that New Zealand Pinot Noir is. In that same year, Pinot Noir overtook Chardonnay as New Zealand's second most planted variety, after Sauvignon Blanc. In the decades since, its international reputation has gone from strength to strength and has performed very well in reviews and competitions. Wine from Marlborough has won the Champion Pinot Noir Trophy three times at the International Wine and Spirit Competition in 2006, 2007, and by Giessen Wines most recently in 2016. A New Zealand wine also won the 2014 Decanter International Trophy for Best in Show Pinot Noir, up against Burgundy Gevry Chamber and Premier Cru and other top wines from around the world. That said, 
it is important to note that many of the top producers in France do not submit their wines to international competitions. As of 2018 the largest annual volume of New Zealand wine was produced in 2014.